What's up, everybody? How you feel? How you doing? It's Tim Spinach over here. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for the love. I'm going to turn my headphones off here, take them off. I'm so excited. Listen, you know, once in a while, you get a chance to, to see and hang out and talk to people that you really respect. I mean, check it out. Here's Arthur Baker, everybody. Arthur Baker, the one and only Yo. Arthur. Thank you Hello, so much for taking the time hey, to talk Chicago. to me. Wow. This is amazing. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. You hear me? Yep, perfect, perfect. So, cool. where do you where do we start? I mean, you know, look at I'm sweating on everything. This you're like what you're like an icon. For? You're the get guy the that AC is, on. I'm sorry. I said, get your AC on. No, oh, yeah, we gotta do that. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you shaped the landscape of most of the people that are people that are watching right now. You shaped the landscape of, of uh, the music. I mean, you've worked with uh, Bruce Springsteen, Cindy Lauper, Diana Ross. I mean, the list goes on and on. Right. I mean, Africa Bambata, come Afri- on. John, I, John Rocca, come on. New Order, yeah, Freeze. Yes. Keep going. Let's, let's let's talk about the real people, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So, so let me, Baby, wait. Baby and Keys, come on. Yes. <laughs> so it started out, you were a DJ in the 70s. Yeah. How, first of all, how was that? I mean, would mix and records 45s, without... no, no pitch control, 45s. We, we would use a shot glass with quarters in it to slow down the record. So you wouldn't be able to speed up a record. You could only slow, slow it down. Slow down. Oh, my God. That's and, uh, yeah, it was, be- it was beautiful. It was, uh, the, well, the music was great. As you, as you know, people are still playing those tracks like 40 years later. You know, the whole disco thing is so big now again that, you know, these are tracks that was 73, 4, 5, and 6. It's still being played now. So, I mean, you know, the music was amazing. You just had to put the record on. People would dance, you know. It was, it was great. I read that in the 70s that you would, when you were DJing, you would find out if a record didn't go over, you'd take it off the turntable and whip it into the crowd. Yeah, I, would, I, I had no patience. None, none whatsoever. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> There's people walking around with patches. Yeah, remember the time. Well, I, I, would, make- I, I give, I give a new meaning to breaking a record. <laughs> exactly. The opposite. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so cool. So uh, let me ask you a question. I know you work with like the big like Diana, uh, Diana Ross. Did, did, was she in the studio with you or did she send you a tape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah, we, um, I did swept away and it was, it was, it was a song that Daryl Hall had written that he was going to record, but Tommy Matola thought it would be a good idea for Diana to do it. And, and Daryl and I uh, produced it together. And we were in the studio, you know, with Diana, obviously. And, and I had them been doing the backgrounds, and they were really out of, out of, t- they were out of tune. And I had to like tell uh, Diana Ross and Daryl Hall that they were out of tune, which was <laughs> how did that go over? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing with Diana, she came in, she she drove up in a Bentley, right? And she and she had like this ridiculous fur coat on. And then she went in the bathroom and she came out like 10 minutes later in a sweatsuit and she, and she, and she sang swept away in a sweatsuit. And then, then, you know, we hung out a bit and then she came for the mix and she, uh, she had, we had a couple of bottles of red wine and she passed out in the, in the studio. And she, she was, she was snoring while we were mixing swept away. So. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that story. No, you know, with all—I yeah. mean, you were—I mean, you were in the middle of it. The bro breakdance scene. You were in the middle of it. I just, you know, we were—I t- was talking to Charlie about this. When, when this all this was going on, were you? Uh, did you were you aware of what was happening, or were you kind of well, yeah, like yeah, in the sure. middle of the forest? I mean, yeah, because yeah. If, well, I didn't know that it would. I didn't know that some of these records would last, you know, thirty, forty years. But you know, I knew that we were making records people were into, and then we. Would, I was getting phone calls from guys like Springsteen and Dylan to mix their records. So it wasn't like, you know, I mean, it, yeah, I was aware that it was a good time. It was a good time in my life for sure. And that, and, and, you know, you didn't, you didn't know if it would, if it would continue or, or if it would end, you know, you, it was sort of you just, I was just making records and, and, and uh, enjoying and enjoying it at the time, you know, just making the records, making music. That's awesome. The magic all happened at Shakedown Studios. And uh, yeah, I, I see, most I, of it, yeah. I see Aldo Marin is on right now. He's, uh, he said he did some edits for you, too. Yeah, everyone did edits for me. Literally everybody from Shep to, uh, to Junior Vasquez to, you know, uh, uh, Omar Santana, 
the Latin Rascals. I mean, everyone everyone did edits. I I think Charlie probably did a few yes, edits I at did. one point yeah. too. Yeah, He's shaking his head. Yes. Yeah. So I, everyone was editing for sure. You know, with the Latin Rascals, I made people cry. People would cry in my edit room. You know, <laughs> the, Latin, the Latin Rascals would cry because they they would be working on an edit and then they would uh, they would like lose. They would take something out and I'd go. What happened to that piece? And then I remember Albert would like point to the floor and there was like all this tape and he started crying. He started crying. Pretty funny. Victor Simonelli, Lenny D, they, they had did edits for me also. So No, that's amazing. Yeah, everyone everyone did edits. So it 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 shaked down. And then guys like um, Adam Adam Yelp from the Beasties, he was an assistant engineer. So, you know, Mark Plotty was an engineer, Andy Wallace who who did um who did Nirvana's album? He 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 was an he was the the house engineer there. So we had a lot of people through through the uh, through the studio over the years for sure. Oh, that's amazing! Wow. Yeah. Uh, so um, let's see. My question with the Latin Rascals. Let me just ask you: did, Were they in the radio and you pulled them in, or they they knocked on your door and then? No, I heard I heard one of their edits on uh, KTU, and I, okay. and I and I and I called KTU and I said, "Who are those guys fucking up my tracks?" You know? <laughs> Oh, that's and basically, they said, "Oh, it's the Latin Rascals," and I uh-huh. called them, and they they came in, and, and when they fir- the first day they were there, they were like so obviously really shy and quiet, and then within like three months, you couldn't shut Tony Moran up. I mean, he was like, <laughs> you know, he he took over the place, but yeah, they were great. I mean, it was it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It was like a family there. There were so many people in and out, and you know, we had lots of projects. The Sun City record, we we did. We recorded most of the sessions there, also. So, you know, there was a lot going on. And you signed a a new edition too. New edition. Well, new edition was on my label on on Streetwise. um, Rockers Revenge, who who have just sort of we we, they've come back together, and we have a record out on Crosstown Rebels. And I'm filming. I'm 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 directing a documentary on their on their lives and their careers because they've had really interesting lives. And uh, so I've been directing that film right now so I'm, I'm working with them again and uh yeah i mean freeze new order all the all these yeah, they were all on they were all on streetwise that, that was my label at the time so what a great time for music now, yeah uh, let me ask great. you about uh can we talk about uh planet rock for a second i mean that was your big record sure, yeah and so how did that record come about i mean is, is was it just like guys in the studio and they just were making stuff up as you were recording or what was happening well no we had a we had a we had a plan um we, we knew we were going to use the beat from, I mean, originally there was a demo that Tom Silverman had, which was, it just had the melody from Trans Europe Express, but it had other beats and other things. And, and then a few weeks before we went in, or maybe a week before, I was at the record shop that the guys from uh, Rockers Revenge managed a record shop called Record Factory in Brooklyn. And, and, and the, the Kraftwerk album would, would, uh, had just come out. And number they played numbers in the store, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is the beat for sure." So I, I decided we'd use num we'd use the beat from numbers, and then I I had to find a drum machine because the first um, rap record I did for Tommy Boy was Jazz and Sensation, and that was all live. That was live drummers and you know live rhythm section. So I had to find a I had to find someone with a drum machine, and I found it, and there was an ad in the Village Voice, and it said, "Man with with with." with drum machines. So I called the guy up and it was at 808 and I checked out the 808 at Sam Ashes and I thought, Oh, this is good. So we hired, we hired the guy. His name was, his name was Joe. He didn't, he didn't want to get a check. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let us pay him in a check. He wanted cash. So we, we never, we don't, we never had his last name. So we, we, to this day, we don't know. Even who it was. We don't know his last name because he wanted, a, he wanted cash instead of a check. If we had paid him with a check, we would have his name. So he sort of blew all the history he could have been involved with over thirty dollars. I think it was thirty dollars for the, uh, you know. But yeah, when, we went in, the, when, when we went in, the rappers hated it. They hated the track. The, Bambada loved it, but the rap was hated it. They were like they didn't they didn't know how to they didn't know how to rhyme around it. And Globe, who was sort of the mastermind, he took it home and then he he came up with this thing he called. Um, uh, MC Poppin. Instead of rapping, he called it MC Poppin, and it was sort of off the beat. It was like halftime. So he sort of saved it because literally, without him being able to rap that way, and then you know, then also I came up with the 
the hook, the rock, rock, the planet rock, don't stop. So <laughs> I came up, I came up with that. And then um, John Roby played keys on it. That was the first record I did with him. And uh, yeah, it all, it all came, it definitely all came together in the studio. But once we had done the music, we knew, I knew we had something special. The rappers, as I said, they thought like, they were like, they thought they would never get another chance to have a record again. They thought it was going to be so such a flop. They thought they thought that was it. We're never going to get another chance. So <laughs> well, they didn't like, believe in it really. Ben Vada believed in it, but the rappers didn't get it at all. So that's crazy. What forty that. years ago? I, mean, I, I did a movie a few years ago called Eight Hundred Eight, which I was one of the producers on. It, it's the history of the Eight Hundred Eight and all the records that were made. And, and if, if if any of the audience are interested in in, in that whole vibe. It's, great movie it's on it's on uh it's on itunes now and uh, it was on apple music and beats and it, it's called 808 the movie and it tells the story of all those records all those classic records that were made with on the 808 i'll be watching it tonight there we go hey there's charlie hey arthur how are you all right man how are you it's been a long time has it it's been a lo yeah, yeah long enough i you guess gray hair? <laughs> yeah yeah i see man but you, you look you look pretty you look in good shape. You know, you're still... Uh, hey, I work out, you know? I do what you I work out, do. yeah. You're in Chicago. <laughs> you know, you got to work out in Chicago. Arthur, right? thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk No to problem, you. man. No I, problem. I can't tell you all the history that you've shared. I'm just sitting in, my, I'm sitting in Miami tonight. You know, I'm just at home in Miami. and Awesome. Sitting in my computer and, you know... Right on. Well, thanks again for, for spending time with us. And a piece of history right here. This is the Arthur Baker right here on our show. Yo. Wow. He Thank you again so that. much, Arthur, All for right. taking time to talk to little All old right. me. Is this Arthur Baker going to play right now? Yeah, this is Arthur. I'm going to play right. IOU right now. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Wow. Bye. Arthur Baker on my show.